Welcome everyone, today we'll be taking a look into Rari Capital, what they do, how you can use their services and their underlying governance token. So what is Rari Capital? Well put simply, it is a yield aggregator. So what they do is that they pool investors funds together and then deploy them into a range of yield producing services. So there are so many DeFi projects out there uh, that will offer you yield uh, for depositing your assets there. And there are so many that it can be quite difficult sometimes to just keep a track of it all. So what you can do, you can let Rari earn, take all of the hard work out of it, put your money in there, they'll convert it into stable coins and then lend it out to a variety of different uh, DeFi projects out there. So first of all, they do this to just mitigate the risk of any one project rugging or being exploited so you don't lose all your funds. And then secondly, they rebalance between all the different DeFi projects in order to sort of maximize the yield that um, investors will receive. So this is useful for passive investors as it means that they don't have to go around trying to chase the highest yield. They can go and do something else with their lives while Rari Earn just does all the hard work. Uh, additionally, uh, it means that you can sidestep all of the prohibitive gas costs that sometimes occur on Ethereum where it might not make any sense for you as an individual to start moving your money around. So uh, Rari Capital can do that for you. So what they do is they'll go to Compound, lend out some money, um, the Yearn Vaults, Aave, Mstable, DOIDX and some of the Rari Capital's own Fuse Pools. So let's take a look at Rory Earn. This is what it should look like. At the top, you'll have one year of return simulated using the current yield. So this is what $10,000 uh, put into Rory Earn might look like in the future. Um, so you have the stable pool, which only interacts with the safe audited contracts. So you're talking things like uh, Aave, Compound, DYDX, or you have the yield pool, which will utilize unaudited contracts as well as leveraged yield farming techniques um, that you find on like Alpha Homora um, to get as much yield as possible. But what's funny is that right now the stable pool is actually um, getting you a better return than the yield pool, which is good for investors because it means that you don't have to take on the extra risk um, to even receive a good return. So if you go down here to the bottom, you see that the USDC pool is earning you about 10% a year, the die pool 12% a year, uh, the yield pool 6% a year, and you also have the ETH pool, which currently isn't um, active right now because it, it was active about a month or so ago, but uh, what ended up happening was that an exploit occurred and it just drained the ETH pool. So I'm sure this will come back in the future. And it's the same as like a USDC or die pool, you just deposit your ETH there and then you'll get um, price exposure to Ethereum whilst also earning a yield on it. So let's take a look into Rari Capital's killer product and that is Fuse. So Fuse allows users to create their very own lending and borrowing marketplaces like Compound or Aave. Imagine what you could do with that. Users can customize what collateral can be used, the different reserve factors, how liquidations are incentivized, admin fees, interest rate models and much more. So if, if I recall correctly, when Fuse first came out, someone made a Fuse pool for Unisox. So what people could do was they could come along, put their Unisox down as collateral, and then receive um, about 2% yield by lending that out. Additionally, they could borrow ETH, USDC, or DAI against the value of their Unisox. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it also allowed people to take out short positions on Unisox. So what they could do is they could borrow it from Fuse, sell it on the open market, and then buy it back at a lower price, keep the difference, and then return the socks with a bit of interest uh, back into Fuse. So Fuse has so much potential. For example, if had any Lido tokens, you could go to Pool 6, deposit them there, and then borrow against your Lido position up to 50% of how much it is worth. Uh, the same deal with Alchemix, but 75% worth. If you had any staked Olympus DAO tokens, you make your way down to pool 18, deposit them as collateral, and then borrow USDC, DAI, ETH, or Thrax against it. You can see that this was very popular as um, DAI is offering a 19% APY, USDC 17%, and ETH 
5%, which is quite good. You don't usually get um, that high borrow rates for um, coins like Ethereum. So what you could do is put your staked Olympus DAO tokens in pool 18, borrow die against it, buy more Olympus DAO tokens, stake them, and then put them in fuse again as collateral. Good stuff, right? So the Rari Capital guys put up a Medium article basically detailing what views can do and what it will be able to do in the future. So I chose 10 of the things that I think are super important. So the first thing that I think is really important is treasury management for DeFi protocols. A lot of DeFi protocols out there will hold their entire treasury in their native token. And what that means is that they can't access that liquidity without having to dump on the market. Second big potential use case, I think, is using NFTs as collateral. We already saw Unisocks being used as collateral. Um, imagine someone being able to put their CryptoPunks or their Bored Apes or uh, their Crypto Kitties up as collateral and being able to borrow against it or even being able to short sell it. Three, borrowing against LP tokens. Or borrow against synthetic assets that you might see on synthetics or Mirror Protocol. So imagine that you went up to Mirror Protocol, bought M Tesla, put it in as collateral infuse, and then just borrowed against it. I love this. Five, borrow against options. Six, leverage yield farm any protocol. Seven, leverage your leverage yield farm tokens from Alpha Homora. Eight, borrow against staked assets. So you can take your staked ETH um, tokens from Lido, uh, put them into Fuse, borrow against it, and then you can buy more. 9. Delta neutral strategies on any token, and then 10. You can leverage any asset, which is awesome. Any asset that is allowable as collateral and views, you can put it as collateral, borrow against it, and buy more of it, and then put it back into the fuse pool as collateral. So much potential here, and I hope that the market will really start to re-rate um, how Rari Capital is valued, because fuse is just so exciting. So let's take a look into the underlying token of Rari Capital, and that's the Rari Governance token, which is ticker symbol RGT. Um, at the current time of filming, the price is $8.64. You can see at the start of the year, it was roughly $0.30, cents, so they've had a really good year, um, the guys at Rari Capital. There are 10 million RGT in circulation right now with 87.5 percent of that being given out to the community in liquidity mining rewards whilst the remaining 12.5 percent are there for the developers for funding expansion and wages and so on and so forth but i think they gave a lot of them up um, just in order to be able to reimburse the people who got their eth stolen in the recent um exploit there so i really com so i really commend the uh Rari Capital devs on that. The Rari Governance token allows you to make proposals to the DAO or even vote on the proposals of others. Um, it is a valueless governance token because there's no value accrual to the token. However, I think that most people are just going to treat this like uh, Rari Capital equity. So what do they have in the pipeline for the future? They have a fork of Rari Capital which will launch on Polygon called Rake Capital. So if you like what Rari have to offer, uh, you can go over and use their services on Polygon, but with really cheap fees. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is just a quick overview of Rari Capital. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe.